Imagine a night where ancient legends come alive, where witches dance under the moonlight and mysteries lurk in the shadows. In this video, we're gonna uncover the secrets of Walpurgis Night, a celebration steeped in history and myth. Hi, my name is Alina, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Walpurgis Night is a special holiday celebrated in Europe and Scandinavia on April 30. Walpurgis Night has its roots in ancient pagan tradition that celebrated the arrival of spring. It happens on the night before May 1st, which is six months before Halloween, and this timing is not just a random occurrence. Both Halloween and Walpurgis Night come from old pagan customs known as Semain and Baltain respectively, which honored the shifts in seasons. These dates were significant because people thought that the boundary between our world and the spirit realm was weakest during these times. These holidays roots go way back to old time celebrations when people honored fertility and the start of spring. As Europe became more Christian, the old pagan celebrations about growth and seasons got mixed up with a story about a nun named Walpurga. She came to Germany in the late 700s to convert the Saxons to Christianity. Afterwards, she became a leader of the Heidenheim Monastery. Walpurga was known for fighting diseases like pass, rabies, and whooping cough. She was also famous for stopping pagan sorcery. After she became a saint, people prayed to her for protection against witchcraft. People link Walpurga to May 1st because of a story from 870 AD saying that she became a saint on that day. This connection with the pagan celebration on the same day is likely just a coincidence, but it helped merge the old views and new beliefs. People who still followed the old ways could celebrate without worrying about punishment, blending the spring festival with Christian traditions. On this day, people have reasons to celebrate both practical and also related to traditions and stories. Back in the Middle Ages, the legal year ended on the last day of April. Because of this, it became a big holiday for people with bonfires, children going door to door for treats, and dances and songs about spring starting. Trick-or-treating, kind of like what we do now, used to happen on Valborg in southern Sweden. Even though it's not common anymore, children used to go to the woods and bring back branches to decorate houses in the village and they get eggs as a thank you. In Sweden, the bonfires started in the early 18th century. They come from all ceremonies that we don't know much about anymore. Boltain and Samain are both about farming, but they are more about taking care of uh, animals rather than growing crops. During this time, animals were let out to graze or brought closer to home for the winter, and bonfires were also helpful to scare away animals that could hurt the livestock. The key differences between Walpurgis and Boltain are that Boltain is more Gaelic and is celebrated on May 1st, while Walpurgis is more Germanic and is celebrated the night before Boltain. If you look back in history, you'll notice that these celebrations were rooted in rural customs in places that didn't have much contact with the outside world. And back then, the differences between Walpurgis and Boltain weren't that noticeable. As ancient beliefs faded, people looked for new symbols. The church replaced all gods with saints. A day once dedicated to a goddess now honors a saint with similar qualities. Over time, St. Walpurga's story became intertwined with ancient names such as Nehalini, Holda, and Birchta. She became associated with Walpurgis Night that is linked to witchcraft and the details about the real woman behind the saint faded away. If you look closely at the stone carvings and chapels dedicated to Walpurga, you'll notice that some symbols appear again and again. Those symbols usually include a bundle of grain and a dog.
Nine nights before the 1st of May is Wolburga in flight, unseasonally chased by wild ghosts and seeking a hiding place from village to village. People leave their windows open so she can be safe behind the cross-shaped window pane struts from her roaring enemies. For this, she lays a little gold piece on the windowsill and flees further. A farmer who saw her on her flight through the woods described her as a white lady with long flowing hair, a crown upon her head, her shoes were fiery gold and in her hands she carried a three-cornered mirror that showed all the future and the spindle as does Birchton. A troop of white riders exerted themselves to capture her. So also another farmer saw her whom she begged to hide her in a shock of grain. No sooner was she hidden than the riders rushed by overhead. The next morning the farmer found grains of gold instead of rye in his grain stook. Therefore the saint is portrayed with a bundle of grain. The story is more like a legend about a powerful German goddess rather than a story about a Catholic saint. It gets even more interesting when we look at the connection between the goddess Walburga and her dogs. In German mythology, goddesses were often linked with dogs that resemble their familiars. People even believed that Saint Walburga's name could calm an angry dog. A spindle and grain are the symbols of the joy of spring's arrival. The windhound, another symbol, is often connected to fertility and bringing abundance to homes and fields. People also compared Walburga to the Valkyries, mythical women who rode horses. Holda, who was linked to Walburga, was also associated with riding through the night on distaffs, similar to how witches were said to ride brooms. She was believed to oversee female spirits called Halden. These spirits would secretly leave their sleeping husbands at night and ride through the sky to attend feasts or engage in battles among the clouds. The Catholic Church didn't like the idea of flying on broomsticks. They said if someone did it, they would have to do a year of penance. Walpurgis night is a time for dancing and jumping, much like May Day celebrations. People would jump as high as they could, believing that the grain would grow as high as they jumped. During Walpurgis night, fires were lit for various purposes. People burned old stuff for good luck. They also made straw men that represented illness, sadness and bad luck and burn them to ward off negativity. To avoid bad weather and ensure a good harvest, people would leave bread and butter for the Enkenschnitt, a mythical creature that is believed to control weather. On Walburgis night, children gathered plants such as ash, hawthorn, juniper and elder, and they would hand them around their houses and barns. This was done to keep witches away, which is ironic because it used to be done to make God is happy. Some people wanted to see witches though. They believed that wearing clothes inside out or walking backwards could attract witches. Wearing a wild radish around your neck or carrying it with you could also do the trick. On Walpurgis night, people believed that love potions were super strong. They also thought divination, which is predicting the future, worked better. Some people slept with one sack on and in the morning if they found a hair in the other sack, that hair color would mean that their future spouse would have the same hair color. Back in the old days, winter was really tough and you needed a good harvest or help from your neighbor in order to get through it. If you didn't have either, that meant you had to work extra hard just to survive. That's why when spring finally came, some people were acting a little crazy because they were so happy and relieved to see the end of winter's hardships. Walburgis night was like saying goodbye to the darkness and welcoming the light. During Walburgis night and Beltane there was a strong focus on embracing sexuality without inhibition. It was seen as the perfect time for couples to come together intimately and that time was perfect to honor goddesses known for fertility. If a woman conceived a child during this period. She would only be five months pregnant by October when the crops were harvested. 
this time and made it easier for her to manage her pregnancy without struggling through the summer's workload. The magic of cunning women who are wise in forest lore is particularly strong during this period. Their spells often focused on love, sexuality and fertility and perfectly aligned with the natural world awakening in spring. In Finland, Walpurgis Night and May Day blend into one big celebration called Vapu, which is a very important holiday there. Originally, Walpurgis Night was a fancy celebration for rich people. But in the 1800s, students, especially engineering students, started celebrating it too. Nowadays, the fun begins on the evening of April 30th, often starting with people drinking low alcohol drinks such as sparkling wine. The celebrations continue into the next day, often becoming a family affair with picnics in parks, balloons and homemade mad called Sima, which sometimes can be quite strong. In Estonia, Walpurgis night used to be a time when people believed witches gathered. Nowadays, they celebrate it with festivities, drinking and with people dressing up as traditional witches. It's interesting to know that unlike the modern witches who can be sometimes portrayed in a positive light, the old stereotypes of witches as hags is still prevalent in these countries, which reflects the historical fear of witches in these cultures. In the Czech Republic, there's also a festival that is celebrated on May 30th, when people burn witches made of rags and straw, or sometimes just a broomstick. Nowadays, it's mostly just an excuse to drink and have fun around a big fire. When the fire burns and black smoke bursts out, everyone cheers because they believe that the witch is flying away. After the fire calms down and it's almost midnight, people head to the woods to find cherry blossoms. They think if a young woman gets kissed under a cherry tree that night and the next day it'll keep both the tree and the lady from drying up. It's also a time to celebrate love. Even though the Catholic Church tried to stop pagan beliefs, some practices like herbalism and rituals continued, especially in places like the Harz Mountains in Germany. These practices stayed quietly until the 16th century when a lot of things came together to cause a big fear of witchcraft. The old customs that were once considered normal started being called evil and superstitious and those who followed them were punished sometimes even with death. During this time, Germany saw one of the worst witch hunts ever. People even believed that Mount Broken, the tallest peak in the Harz Mountains, was where witches gathered for wild meetings called Witches Sabbath. These gatherings were thought to be full of wild parties where witches met with Satan to plan evil for the next year. They thought this happened on April 30th because in old stories the devil Wotan married Freya on the day at the top of Mount Broken. On April 30th, locals gathered together to shell themselves from witches. They made loud sounds, lit big fires, and burned straw men and old stuff to keep away evil spirits. What started as a spring celebration turned into a way to stay safe from harm. Even now, in modern Germany, some of these old customs are kept alive. People dress up in costumes, hand bless greenery around their houses, and leave special bread and butter with honey for ghostly dogs. Over time, the fear and panic about witchcraft started fading away, and Walpurgis Night would have disappeared completely if it wasn't for romanticism that came along in the 19th century. This brought back interest in old traditions and folk beliefs, which which were then used in stories and art. Walpurgis Night changed from being scary to being fun. The Broken Mountain became a popular place to visit and the idea of witches became rather exciting than scary. These days, Walpurgis Night is like a second Halloween. It's a fun time with lots of new and old traditions mixed together.